Vlogmas. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another day of Vlogmas Christmas. <laughs> so, if you can tell by my face right now, I have a ton of makeup on because I just finished filming a makeup tutorial, so I figured for today, for vlogmas for this episode i'm going to show you guys like what i used to film and what my usual filming setup is because i've never done any sort of vlog or any video that really shows what i do to film videos like when i do videos for my makeup channel or even these vlogs i've never really talked about it at all i feel like so today i'm going to show you guys since everything's already set up and ready to go anyway so let's take a look at that and my arm is already tired why why is my arm already tired? Oh, oh, I feel so Christmas. Oh, oh my God. I'm actually really upset because the other day when I was riding my bike for the previous vlog, like two days ago, um, one of the screws fell out from my camera. And to film my vlogs, I use the Canon G7X Mach 2 or 3? Mark 2. It's Mark 2. And it has the flip up camera. So I look right above the lens to see myself while I film. So I know if I'm in frame and stuff like that or if I'm in focus. And there's screws that keep it in place. And on one side of it, the screws fell out. So that's really disappointing because now it's really flimsy and it could break a lot easier. So that was really, really, really disappointing. I've been a little bit heartbroken about that ever since the bike ride vlog. But yeah, so to film my vlogs, I always have the cameras that I use in the description box down below. So that information has always been on my vlog channel. So most of you guys probably already know because it's no longer a commonly asked question since it is always in the description box. So yes, to film my videos, I use the Canon G7X Mach 2. I used to use the Sony... Oh, I don't even know back in Japan so the quality wasn't as good and I prefer the quality on this one much 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 better it gives a really sharper more clear image however I preferred the audio on my old Sony camera better I feel like the audio on this isn't as true to life um, and then to record videos I always make sure I use a high quality SD card if you use low quality ones you're not going to get the best footage that the camera can produce so it's really important that you use high quality SD cards. I actually never used to do that until halfway through last year I, I learned that. So if you are planning to ever film YouTube, oh, yeah, see that thing is broken. But basically if you are ever planning to film YouTube videos, then definitely make sure you have the highest quality SD card on you for that. So without further ado, let's hop into how I film my videos. This is my current setup for when I film YouTube videos. I always use two ring lights ever since I moved here. In Japan, I had one ring light and then two umbrella lights. And I realized I like having the option of having two lights on either side of me. And then I just sit in a chair or on the floor depending on where I'm filming. I used to film on this white wall, which is directly behind or in front of the window. So the window is directly behind me out onto the balcony. So it gives natural light plus the ring light. So because we got this new couch, I kind of had to compromise. So now my makeup is on the blank that I used to sit in front of to film my videos. So now that's where my makeup is. And right now my makeup is a disaster because I was rummaging through it filming. So I used to film here with the natural light behind me, but I had to change it up. Now I sit here with my ring lights facing me. I have one dimmed down lower than the other because we do have the natural light coming on the opposite side of my face. So one ring light is set to full blast while the other one is dimmed down because we have double the light here compared to this side. And then I sit here and so for my camera placement, I currently have it supported via my clothing rack. Before in Japan and at home in Canada and even in Korea I had a tripod like a larger tripod but I only have my Jolby large tripod flexible tripod and then I'm just using this laundry rack to balance it out and have it on the height that I want when I sit down. Then I just have that camera focused through the ring lights so you don't actually see the ring lights in the footage and it shoots through them onto me where I would be sitting right here. If anyone in Australia is wondering where I got the ring lights, I got them on ebay.com.au. There was a seller that 
sold them. I think each ring light was 120 or maybe just under that. I know I didn't pay too much for two ring lights. I think it came up to $200, including the tripods and mounts. And they are dual voltage, so they can be used in any country. And they're LED dimmable lights. And they came with the different colors on them as well. So I have multiple colors, but you can set the wheel to have either white like just pure white outline or you can mix it up like I didn't have 50% of a warm toned with just the white covers over them or you can choose to have just warm covers over them. For me since my apartment is all white and I have natural lighting but the sun never directly comes through the window we're on the dark side of the building so the lighting in here naturally always is more on the cool side rather on the warm side which is why I have 50% of the covers on the warm side while the other 50% is on the cool white side. So if I can find the eBay page where I bought them, then I'll link it down below, but I'm not too sure if I will be able to, but I'm pretty sure that they're like, like one of the first page of eBay that uh, pops up and they're made in China. They're not made in Australia, unfortunately. Then usually no matter where I film, I have a background light. Before when I filmed with the white wall, I had this shining on to the actual white wall. So it created an equal balance of light plus a nicely lit background. So there was no shadow behind me on the wall. But because my setup changed, I just have this sitting on our couch focusing on the wall so that the background is a little more better lit and not so dark. However, I think with this new background, I need another light to kind of make it a little bit brighter at the back because right now I feel like it's not really bright enough because right now I feel like it's not really bright enough just with that solo light. It's not the most powerful light. It's just a desk lamp, so it's not going to do that much. Otherwise, let's talk about my actual filming camera that I use to film my videos on my main channel, my beauty channel that I've had for years now. So just recently, last year, if any of you guys have been watching since I was living in Japan, you might have seen the vlog when I purchased this camera online on Amazon Japan. I purchased it used, so it was an expensive camera. This is the Lumix GH4, which is a pretty expensive camera. It's a mirrorless DSLR. Plus it has autofocus and all that jazz, so it's really good for people who do self-filming. It has touch focus on the back screen right here, so if you do want to focus anywhere, you just tap on the screen and it will start focusing on that thing. On that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start focusing on that subject. Then the lens has a digital focus capability as well. So unlike other older models of DSLR cameras for in video shooting, the lens itself would have a motor. So it'd be like e -e 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 when it would focus, making it really noisy for when you're filming um, makeup tutorials or anything talking where you need autofocus on. For me back in the day, I used to have that problem. I used to use a Nikon D D3100 and then I used a Nikon D5100 up until last year and um, I had that problem with a lot of my autofocus lenses so I usually would do just manual focus however the problem with that is actually getting yourself in focus and making sure you don't slip out of focus. So for quite a few years a lot of my videos were like there would be parts where I would be out of focus and it drove me insane but I was always just a, a little too cheap to spend the extra hundred to get a camera or a lens which would autofocus for me without making the noise or having a lot of problems. So Kim Dal actually was the first person to get this camera in Japan and I was obsessed with it for so long and she was kind enough to let me use it for a few months um, whenever I wanted to film videos that was so nice of her and that basically sold me on the camera. I had enough of a trial period where I was like, you know what, I can't live without this camera now. It's absolutely perfect for filming YouTube videos. It's It makes my life so easy. It gives the sharpest, clearest footage. It even has 4K capabilities and it has slow motion mode. It has a ton of features in it, making it really amazing for YouTube videos or just any video videography that you wanna do. Plus the lenses that it comes with are out of this world really really good really good lenses but the downside is that the lenses are really expensive so this combo right here that I have not including the tripod is almost two thousand dollars so the camera itself is just over a thousand then the lens itself is like I don't know 800 or something like that it's really expensive and I saved up for a long time to get this I saved up for months and months in Japan and then finally I had the money where I could purchase it 
but I didn't purchase all at once. I purchased the camera first and I used my Nikon lenses on it with an adapter. And then once I had more money, I bought the lens because the lens is one of the main features of this camera that makes it so good for the autofocus capability. When I used my Nikon lenses with an adapter on this camera, it took away any autofocus capability, so I still had to use the manual focus, and it took away from the digital focus, <laughs> digital focus aspect. So having the proper lenses for this camera definitely makes it the complete package for anyone who's wanting to do more professional YouTube videos or higher quality YouTube videos. Now this definitely is an investment, and if you're new to YouTube or you're just going to try being a YouTuber as of recently, then I would not recommend going with this as your first camera. It's beyond a beginner level camera. I think it's more of an intermediate level. I use all manual settings whenever I film my videos, but if you are planning to get into YouTube, I would definitely recommend buying a used camera and getting an older model, something that's not gonna break the bank because you're probably not committed on doing YouTube as part of your career. And I've been doing YouTube for like seven years, although I don't count myself as at all as a professional as I was doing it as a hobby. Up until last year, last year I started taking it really, really seriously. But um, yeah, if you have been doing YouTube for a while and you are in the market for a really good DSLR digital focus camera, smart camera, then I definitely recommend the Lumix GH4. And once again, on all my main channel videos on my beauty channel, I always have the camera that I used, plus the link where I purchased it in the description box down below. Now, like I did say, I do use only manual settings whenever I film my videos, making it more customizable to what location I'm in and stuff like that. The only times I ever use the auto settings on any DSLR camera is if I'm out in public and I need to film quickly and or I'm with people who don't have the patience for me to like fiddle around with manual settings for every scene because that would be really annoying, let's face it. So I always at home for YouTube film on manual settings and based on the light levels of my house, there are certain settings that I always take part in. And for a while I was filming on 50 frames per second, but after a few months of filming at 50 frames per second, I kind of started to feel like the video quality seemed a little like to live action, especially for makeup tutorials. So I switched it back to 25 frames per second. This gives me more of a cinematic effect when filming. It's a little more fluid and flowy, and it's not so like fast paced jittery. For my vlogs, I also was filming at 50 frames per second for quite a while on my Canon G7X. However, I also decided to switch back to 25 frames per second full HD just because I felt like it gives it gives a lot more of a fluid motion in the footage, which just has, like I said, a little more of a cinematic feel. So with this camera here, like I said, 25 frames per second. I never film in 4K because that gobbles up way too much space, which I don't have the luxury of. Plus it slows down the computer to edit and most people don't have 4K laptops or 4K TVs yet. So it's really not something I'm concerned about. However, this camera, like I said before, can film at 4K footage, which is amazing for when I have the available memory to work with that. Or computer power. <laughs> with this lens, whenever I'm filming with my YouTube videos, I always have it fully zoomed in on me and the camera as far away as possible. By doing this, you're able to get more of a shorter depth of field. And what I mean by a shorter depth of field is that the area that will be in focus when you're filming is really, really small wider focal focal area i'm so bad you guys i'm not a photographer or a videographer so me trying to explain this stuff might be a little bit messy so i'm apologizing to anyone out there who is watching this and is an actual like photographer videographer i'm sorry if i'm making this cringy but i'm just trying to explain it in my layman's terms i also kind of do the same on my vlogging camera i keep the f stop or f point at a smaller number so that gives more of a blurred effect so it's like small things that make big differences so little things that you need to know about so i personally like to film my youtube videos with a 1.8 f-stop however this lens does not have a 1.8 f-stop i think the smallest f-stop number i can get is like a 2 or something or a 3.5 not 100 sure but basically it means like 
one inch. So if the f-stop is at one point something, point five, I think it means 1.5 inches will be in focus and then anything beyond that will be out of focus. Another thing is that I always like to film with my ISO at 200 depending on the light situation. So for me, I usually film during the day on cloudy days, that's my preference. So I usually like to have my ISO at 200. That means I'm filming on a bright day, but then I also like to have my aperture um, really open to make up for that. Because I feel like if you have too high of an ISO, like if you're filming with your ISO at 800 or above, you're more likely to get noise in the background. So if you ever see a YouTube video and it's dark lit, or it's in a low lighting situation and the footage looks kind of fuzzy, that's called noise. So to limit the noise, you film at a higher ISO and then open the aperture more, which is how much light the lens allows you to let in. I don't know, if I'm wrong, you guys correct me. I It's either f-stop or aperture or I don't know. I don't know, but either one of those is how much light the lens lets in and then I think the ISO is what registers the light low. I don't know, I'm not professional, I'm so sorry. But yeah, basically those are my favorite settings. So ISO 200, f-stop or aperture at like 60 is usually good or 100 and something, depending on the day. And then my f-stop or the focal point, I like to keep it at two or three, whatever my lens will let me with it zoomed in fully. I always like to keep my white balance on custom because that way I can customize it depending on what the light level is. So if it's overcast, usually it gives more of a warm tone to my footage, but then I like to have it true to life. So I always keep it custom so I can mess around with that a little bit. So always making sure that your white balance is on point is important as well. So you guys, I kind of use those rules with both my vlogging camera and with my actual DSLR Lumix camera. I do switch it up from time to time. So for a while with my Canon G7X for vlogs, I was filming on video mode on the standard level with the 50 frames per second. Then recently I changed it up. So now I film on aperture priority. So that is that focal point. So that's why I have more of a blurred background in all of my footage now and more of a shallow depth of field. Um, just because I like that kind of blurred background effect with my footage and then I also filming at 25 frames per second to give more of a cinematic feel um, Well before for quite a few months. I was just filming on standard video mode um, Just with the basic video settings at 50 frames per second. So everything was sharper and faster Seemingly in the footage now everything is a little bit softer glowier and more flowy um, So yeah, I'm always kind of changing it up and stuff like that then for editing, I use Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> Adobe Premiere Pro. When I first started YouTube, I used iMovie. And then after that, I started using Final Cut Pro, but Final Cut Pro was way too heavy of a program for the MacBook I had at the time. It was like a 2008 or 2011 MacBook. Um, so it just couldn't handle Final Cut Pro. It was too heavy of a program. So I stopped using that and switched to Adobe Premiere Pro. And I've been using it ever since, like, for years now. And there really, there really isn't much to say about how I edit my videos. Um, for my vlogs, I keep it really, really simple because I don't always have the luxury of putting a lot of work into my vlog videos. So it's usually just cut, paste, fine tuning. And then you guys see, I, um, I sometimes add in little extra clips in there or little kind of like subscribe buttons and stuff and music. I never color grade my footage, only once in a while I do, but mostly my footage is always raw. I never fine tune or edit the colors unless they're really bad and I'm like, geez, these colors seriously need some help. They need some TLC. But otherwise, I just kind of film it all um, with true to color. I have the settings on my Canon camera that I'm using right now. Those settings usually have a little bit of a bump up on the saturation and then I also like to keep the footage more on the warm scale. So there's um, setting options you can choose in this camera where you can tweak those things in video mode. So for me, I have the saturation bumped up maybe one, one peg and then I have it more on the warmer side just because like I said before, my apartment pulls a lot of cold tones with the lighting that we get in here. So things on footage can seem a lot colder than they actually are. Um, color wise. <laughs> so, when I do edit my videos, depending on the type of video, it can take anywhere from an hour to two hours to edit them. Um, certain vlogs will take a little bit longer, like I'm sure this vlog right now where I'm talking for a long time about inf 
informative stuff and I stutter a few times. It's probably gonna take me a little bit longer to edit, maybe more on the two hour side of the spectrum. Same with my main channel videos with this. Depending on the type of video, it could be either really, really fast of an edit, like 40 minutes to an hour or two hours. Usually with makeup tutorials where I do voiceovers, that takes more two hours. But if it's me just sitting there talking, doing a tutorial, it's a lot faster. Or for even my skincare review videos, those ones are usually pretty fast, like an hour to edit. So yeah. Anyway, you guys, I'm gonna cut myself off here before this video becomes 30 minutes long, which I feel like it is. And for the rest of the day, I'm thinking I'm just gonna go to the grocery store, buy hamburger mixings, because I want a hamburger tonight, and a bottle of wine, because I want a bottle of wine, because Christmas! I hope you guys enjoyed this interesting Vlogmas video. Um, Remember to thumbs up if you did, if you liked seeing my setup for how I film my YouTube videos. Remember to thumbs up also if you like Vlogmas and daily vlogs. And um, if you want to see how I got this makeup look, then subscribe to my beauty channel. It's always in the description box down below. That's where I upload anything beauty, skincare, makeup related. Everything like that goes there. And yeah, remember to subscribe if you want to see more. I'm doing daily vlogs during December for Vlogmas. And uh, I share my life daily life as I live in Melbourne, Australia. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, comment down below too if you're a photographer or videographer and you thought me explaining camera stuff was funny. Let me know. And before I go, I just put my sock on and there was a dead moth in it this big. I was like, ow, what is stabbing me in the foot? So I took it off thinking it would be like a stick or something. No, it was a friggin' moth this friggin' big, dead in my sock, all dried out. I guess when I was hanging up my laundry outside, it crawled in while it was drying. Disgusting. Poor moth, but it's really creepy. If it was alive, I would have lost it. I would have freaked out for sure. It was all up in my kitty socks. No. It's in this foot. Yuck.